Hey yo, what's up? It's Matt Bowman, and this is Matt Bowman is bothered, and I hope that you're bothered too. Not too bothered, but just a little bit, you know, just a little bit irked, a little bit perturbed, a little bit frustrated, you know. Whatever's got you down, whatever's getting your goat, whatever's grinding your goat, whatever's grinding your balls, whatever's flicking your little sack from behind. I'm there with you, dude. I'm right there with you for whatever is fucking right up in there, dude. I am, uh, I'm feeling all right. Feeling, feeling a little freaking exhausted, dude. Just a little freaking tired. Just a little tired. I, uh, we, I just did a big old, big old freaking road trip with a couple comics and that was really fun. We, we flew from New York to LA and then drove from L.A. to Atlanta. Stupid. No, it was really fun, though. To, uh, doing We did shows in all the cities. Doing the shows was fun. The states, for the most part, were ass. Like, we went to Los Angeles, and it is as bad as they say. And by they, I mean anyone who has, did, will live there. It's not great. It was, it, it was fine. It was fine. And by fine, I mean a homeless man exposed himself. Um, not, to, not his penis. He just like opened up emotionally to me. He was very vulnerable with me and then asked me for $5. But uh, yes, yeah, so we did. We went to Los Angeles first, and then yeah, Los Angeles is a funny, fucking weird place. It's like where else is there such a juxtaposition of like the haves and the have-nots? It's wild out there. It's kind of crazy. Like you have people that are out there, like every single fucking show, like the mil what is it, like the million dollar listing or selling sunset or I'm a whore with big tits and also fifty five, like whatever all those shows are that are out there, they're um those are the haves. And then quite literally just out of frame of all of those shows are the most mentally deranged fucking potentially violent homeless criminal it's crazy like and pe like people are like just like stepping over like it's literally like the fucking parable of like the whatever the samaritans or some shit whatever where jesus was like yeah there's a there's two really cool guys um and then they like step over this almost dead guy everybody's doing that in la everybody everybody be stepping everybody be stepping over People that are clearly on, on drugs. Everyone's on drugs. Um, even the, the people that aren't, they're, they're on drugs. They're taking Ozempic. I think that's the one. That's the, like the, I'm super fat and haven't done anything about it, so let me go get a cortisone shot or whatever the fuck, and then it, I'm just not hungry. I have the appetite of a normal person again. I think that's what that drug is. So people are either on that, they're on um, government-sponsored weed, like government-sponsored marijuana, which it was good shit, but like it was so expensive because they're just taxing the mother flipping balls off of it, dude. Like it's crazy. It was good. It was good marijuana, but it was tough. That's the other dude back here. Like, in New York, I'm starting to see, like, official commercials for places that sell weed. Like, official spots. Um, and they're, they're like, making it a thing of just, like, get, support the community. Give back to the community. This is about the community. And I don't know. Like, I'm 100% down and very cool with the decriminalization of marijuana. I'm, I'm so fucking down with that. However... If I was, it just, the government just seems like a it's insane what they've done now. Like, for years, they just put away people, fucking sent them to prison, jail, whatever, for years and years and years for having, like, a little bit of pot, and now they're just like, oh, actually, it's just like running a daycare. What a great community service. 
you know your local park fucking plant pot in there because it's all about the community we as the government are all about community and supporting the community and weed is the community dude i would be so fucking pissed if for my entire life i saw myself my friends my family members like get in not just like a slap on the like fucking sent away for weed and then you just turn it on and there's some fucking 30 year old white bitch on the commercial just being like invest in your local property eat my whole ass dude like the it it is pretty ballsy to go from hardcore criminalized to have it at your baby shower you know like i don't i guess i don't i don't also don't know what i want but i don't want that i think that just looks a little bit weird I don't maybe and maybe I'm wrong on it but it just it feels like it feels like an overcompensation like it should kind of just be like hey fucking weeds around weeds legal have a good time or like go funny with it like get higher like Cheech and Chong and Pete Davidson to be like are you thinking about being gay and they're like I mean a little bit and they're like well then smoke another J bro and we'll see what happens you know what I mean like that would be a better commercial than fucking like we are supporting local farmers and inside the greenhouse is where the green plant is planted and we are here to support you shut up you weren't part like you weren't here to do it fucking 10 15 20 years ago even fucking two years ago before Cuomo started diddling people and killing the elderly Cuomo had to touch a couple touch a couple broads and kill at least a thousand homeless people not homeless old people before you could be a part of the community that's another thing like that's hilarious that the way that it came about was because of Andrew Cuomo's impropriety. And now it's just like, it's a staple of our community. Fuck off. Ted, go to the bedroom. Go. Jesus Christ, my fucking cats, dude. It makes me so angry. They're, they're sound asleep. My cats are sound asleep. I'm sorry, I'm going off on a tangent. My cats are sound asleep. And then as soon as I sit down to start doing a podcast, which is only like 30 fucking minutes, I just sit down and they come over and not only do they just like come over and like say hi and then go away, they like insist on fucking jamming their nostrils and assholes all over the camera so it's like wobbly and shit. Rooney will jump up here and go, and it, oh my God, I am hot, hot under the collar. All right. I'm done with that. So yeah, LA is a shithole. Um, I think everywhere sucks. Everywhere generally kind of sucks. Because like we drove from LA and then we stopped off in Tucson, which do we need it? Like 100%, are we sure we need it? I don't know, like we drove from LA to Tucson and Tucson to Austin and from LA to Austin Tucson like in the little not even the middle but like whatever the, the third of the way there it was just kind of like a tan forever it was just like God just did like control C control V control V control V control V control V with tan and I don't know like why is it part of our country that I don't care what country it belongs to, but I just am confused why it's ours. Just because it's between California and Texas, we're like, well, I guess we'll just have this too. Like, I don't know, what is the purpose of having such a, uh, like, we're just like, oh, and we would also like a desert. Could we have a desert, please? I'll take desert for 600 Actually, we didn't, I don't think we paid anybody for that shit. I don't even know how we acquired the Southwest, but parts of it are nice. Joshua Tree is a fucking sham. 
Like, there are so many dope-ass national parks out there in, like, on the West Coast or just on the West. The mountains and the fucking uh, trees and climbing and, like, being a little fruity. Like, there's a fun there's a fun atmosphere to go to hiking in national parks. But then there's national parks that are just the desert, and I don't understand. I don't get it. Like, everybody, the reason that it's, it's uh, fucking popular is because it's the closest national park to Los Angeles. And so that's why every rich person is just like, oh my god, dude. Dude, Joshua Tree is, it's a fucking, it's a vibe. Joshua Tree is a vibe, bro. You know, like, it's a vibe. No, it's the it closest in proximity. It's not even close to the coolest national park. Like, it, it, I mean, fucking the Great Smoky Mountains is cooler than Joshua Tree, if I'm speaking as somebody from the East Coast. I'm not even from the East Coast. I'm from the fucking Midwest, but I'm from this side. I'm closer to the East Coast than I am to fucking Joshua Tree. For Joshua Tree to be as cool as it should be, or as it's advertised to be, you would think that, like, people would go there and fucking, like, saw Moses in the burning bush or something. I mean, obviously, people are going there and burning bushes. They're... Ooh. Like, they're doing that, and they're doing, like, peyote and ayahuasca and shit. So that's the other thing, is that it's not a cool place. It's just a place where people get high and are like, oh, dude, you gotta go. It is... Joshua Tree is the crack house of national parks. Like, it's a bunch of fucking just leathery, wrinkled white people that have no business being there and then a bunch of fucking rich dickholes from Los Angeles that are like, let's go to nature. And then they just stay in a fucking Airbnb with like, it's like, it just looks like an environmental disaster because you got like literally an arid desert and then just like a green ass lawn and then a fucking mansion in the middle of it. It's ridiculous. So yeah, LA and out there sucks dick. Um, but then we drove to Austin and that was crazy because we left Tucson and then drove to Austin and that took like 14 hours. But because Arizona does not observe daylight savings, we lost two hours. So it effectively took us 16 hours to get from, well, maybe even a little bit more because we had to stop or whatever. But it took us 16 hours to get from Tucson to Austin because Arizona is just making up their own rules. Like they they just don't have daylight savings time. And I guess I don't I don't I'm I'm not pro one way or the other. The only reason I'm like for daylight savings time is for the absolute ecstasy that is the day where you fall back. That I mean, how is that not like a top five holiday? The day that daylight savings time starts and you get an extra hour where you're just chilling at at one fifty nine and then it just like clicks over to two a.m. and it goes right back to one. Duh! Oh, fill me up, daddy, because that that's a holiday. I mean, like Christmas, Flag Day, fucking the day that the clocks fall back again. I mean, top three holidays. Tell me I'm wrong. I mean, that is that is such a good time because you're like you're that day you're out with your friends, or maybe you're in. Maybe you're just having a night in with the gals or the guys or the guys. You're just having a night in. You're just hanging out. You're like, oh man, this is fucking crazy. And like, you look at like you look at your your phone or your your watch or whatever, and you're like, ah oh, shit, fuck. It's midnight. I got like a 30 minute drive home, or I gotta take the train back up to the fucking wherever you live in your shitty apartment. And you're like, oh man, I gotta go. It's midnight. It takes me like an hour to get home. And then your one friend is like, bro, the clock switch tomorrow. It's actually 11. And you're like, oh, what a feeling, dude. What a rush. That's your favorite person. You're like, thank you. It was like, it, it, they were like a prophet. You just like Tom Brady them. You're just like, Mwah. just kiss them right on the smackers, dude. Because what good news that is. That's amazing news. 
And that's a, that's news that the state of fucking Arizona is missing out on. And, like, I don't know why they've decided to be, like, the lone wolf holdouts. Maybe they're like, hey, our state is kind of bullshit regardless, so let's just do something to put us on the map. That is the only conceivable explanation I have. And I don't know what the purpose of Daylight Savings Time is other than to give me the feeling of doing illegal drugs without doing them the night the clock switch back. That is such a fucking fun day. I mean, like, I'm going to dress up as a, as a clock for Halloween next year because of how much I, that was stupid. Sometimes you try to find something and you try to be funny or witty or clever and it just doesn't happen. And like, as you're saying it, you're like, this isn't it. I don't have it. But that's all right. We hate Tottenham. We hate Tottenham. Uh, so yeah, we did shows in Austin. Austin was, I think, the highlight of the trip. Um, I liked going to Austin a lot. Um, did several spots. I uh, did um, shows at the East Austin Comedy Club, which is a dope um, independently comic run um, comedy club in Austin, Texas. Um, we're able to go over to Rogan's new club, which everyone is just creaming their jeans out there for it dude like the amount of people the amount of people out there comics that were just like yeah you can catch me over at rogan's club and it's just like oh and then you talk to them and they're like yeah i work there i'm like okay so bury the lead on that one a little bit like i'm super happy that you're working over there but like you're not like you're not a past comic and i know that there's like a fucking system and you work your way up all whatever but like you know what you're doing you know what you're doing like it's cool that you're kind of in over there but like you work there they give you a paycheck you get a w2 from them or a 1099 or a w4 or some other letter number combination you do that so don't be misleading and be like, well, you can catch me over. That'd be like, hey, you guys can catch me at the comedy cellar. She's like, oh, are you going on tonight? He's like, no, I'm serving Coronas. I'm the, I'm the bartender. It's fucking annoying. But it's okay. The rest of Austin was great. I loved Austin. Rogan's Club was cool. We got to see the inside of it a little bit. But then we, we had to go to, we went to... Uh, Sorry, something just kind of smells like it's burning, so I don't know what's going on. But yeah, Rogan's Club was really cool. Um, the we got to we didn't go see the show because the tickets are fucking astronomical. It's just like, are we paying for a ticket to Mars or to see a showcase comedy show? Then, so we did that, but we went to the bar that was like attached to it, which is like open to the public. But dude, it was like trying to get into the fucking Pentagon. It was crazy. Like, we walk in, and as I'm in line to go through this door, this uh, a guy comes over. He's like, sir, can I examine your bag? I'm like, yeah, sure, that's fine. And then he, like, goes, he does everything but, like, fucking shake it out onto the sidewalk just to see what was it. Like, he, he's rifling. Like, he was rifling and trifling through my shit. I'm like, dude, there's, like, a notebook and a fucking camera stand in there. That's all that, that's all that there is. He was like, okay. That's cool. And then this other lady, I get past him, so I'm done with Dave or whatever the fuck, and I go to this other lady, and she, um, she, like, she's, like, ID, and so normally, uh, 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 sometimes, sometimes they have, like, a little scanner thing, but she, like, took it, and she was, like, a freaking TSA agent. Like, she put it down and, like, scanned it, and, like, they might have taken, like, a photocopy of it or something, and... Then she like she's like okay stand there and like look for it. Then they like take your picture. I'm like I didn't. What is happening? Am I being charged? Can you Mirandize me before I go into this bar? What is happening right now? And then she like gives me my ID back and then she like double stamps my hand and she's like you're good to go. Enjoy Mitzi's. And I was just like okay this seems excessive. Because you go in there and you would expect it to be like fucking Y2K, just like the end of the world party. Like that's why we're like, wow, this is a pretty serious establishment. So we got to make sure that we're not letting any riffraff in here. There's like five people in there. So like, what is this? 
Maybe it's a barrier to entry to, like, stop and frisk every single fucking person. However, it is Texas, and people be having guns. People had a lot of guns in there. That was, like, it was crazy. Like, every, every store had, like, a, please, for the love of Christ, don't bring your gun in here. Hey, please don't have a gun in this CVS. Please, at this daycare, can you please leave your gun in the vehicle? We, please. Every fucking place. Go into like a goddamn Jamba Juice. They're just like, yeah, um, no, the no assault rifles in the Jamba Juice, por favor. It was insane. Everybody was strapped up, dude. We, tr we, we had nothing to do for a couple hours. We went over to the Texas State Capitol kind of on accident. We just kind of were just walking around and there was just like a big tit looking building. And we're like, let's go. Uh, and so we went in and like that was like the same level of security to get into fucking Mitzi's the bar. Like we had to take our bag off and like take off our shoes. Um, and then there's just a dude in there, like uh, not like a security, like he was standing there with a fucking AR-15. Like, I'm not kidding. Like, that sounds hack. I swear to baby Jesus in the manger that we walk in and there's just a guy just standing there fucking. He's got, he's standing there like Bane, first of all. He's standing like this. He's got a sidearm and then like a fucking machete, a bazooka strapped to his back, and then just like an AR 15 doing that cool ass dangle, you know, where it's like I'm not even holding it, but it's just kind of resting on my chest. He was doing one of those and he was just like, come on. You're good. You're good, partner. Come on. I'm like, what is, who's, it? Is this is this that big of an issue? That like you need you need the national guard. I guess it is the capital. But what what bad's ever happened at a capital? I can't. Th nothing bad has ever happened at a capital. I don't know, man. It seemed excessive. So there are a lot of guns in Texas. They are that is right. Texas was so Austin was fun. Texas was dope. Uh, then we did shows in New Orleans. Um, and that was that I don't like that place. I don't, I don't like it. I don't know. Like when, let's be honest with ourselves. When the best thing about your city is that you can just walk around and drink booze. You suck. Like, that sounds like a thing. That sounds like a, a fucking 22 year old trying to get people to come to his party. It's just like, nah, dude, we got, like, booze, and you can drink anywhere, man. Like, fucking everywhere. Just bring it with you, dude. I don't even care, but you gotta bring some bitches. Like, I'm, I'm sorry. Like, is this, is this supposed to be a fun city or fucking Sigma Chi? Like, what is, what is the draw here? Everything smells like garbage. All of the fucking houses have, like, wraparound terraces, which sounds cool until you look and you see that they're held up by five fucking toothpicks. Like, the, every road is uneven and made up of 17 different substances. Like, it goes from, like, cobblestone to pothole fucking asphalt, followed by a little bit of just concrete, and then concrete that's a little different. Like, I don't know what's going on. There's just piles of garbage everywhere, but, I mean, who am I to talk living in New York? But, yeah, it is, it was not a great time. Um, they have a cool comedy club there. It was like Comedy House NOLA, and that was a fun time. I Shouts to them. They, I loved doing that club. That was a really fun time. I appreciated it. But yeah, the city itself kind of stunk. The coolest part, and this is because I am a super fucking nerd, the coolest part was the National World War II History Museum. I mean, spank my ass and call me a veteran because that place rules. Um... What is funny to me was that, like, I went in there. I was like, oh, this is going to be dope. I can't wait. This is going to be the tits. And I'm going to learn so much. And, like, I, I don't mean to sound arrogant, but, like, I knew 98% of the shit that was going on in there. Like, I didn't learn anything, I guess. 
the coolest part was like actually seeing the shit that was in there. That was actually pretty dope. That was like, like this is the gun, and this is this is Hitler's tampon, and this is like Himmler's hymnal, and all of that shit. Like, um, like this is an M1 Grand, and look at this, and this is cool. And then they had like big tanks, and they had like some cool, like uh, like an actual Sherman, and then like an actual Spitfire hanging from the ceiling. Like it was it was pretty cool. Um, little pricey. Little pricey, I think, because I got, like, the 4D movie experience as well, which is something I never do because I never want to spend the extra money. But uh, they did it. I did it. And it was an interesting movie. It was it was fine. Um, but, yeah, the World War II Museum was the tits. I, I, spent, I went there. I went to the World War II Museum. It was me. So the, uh, the trip was, again, me and two other comics. And I went by myself. I lone wolfed it to the World War II Museum, which I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, is how God intended it. The World War II Museum is almost exclusively designed for white men aged mine to dead that haven't had a lot of success with women but enough that they have like a hobby i don't know if that makes sense like it was it, it was literally me actual veterans and like men who have dragged their families there like there were children and some uh women there but they were there begrudgingly they were there because this because they're like okay you owe me though you owe me that was kind of the vibe from most of the the people there that were not myself or 50 to 70 year old men something else that was interesting about it is because i checked out the gift shop again excessive don't need to buy anything from there however you got like you could buy one of those hats that just says like veteran with like the badges and the shit on it which seems illegal like i don't like you can't i feel like you shouldn't just be able to buy those the only place you should be able to buy those is like an army retail resale store because it doesn't seem fair to be able like to get one when you come out of the military actually i don't even know the process maybe you don't get one i just imagine like you do like, you do your service, and then at the end of it, they're just like, uh, hey, here's a hat. And the veterans are just like, yeah, but can, like, you help me with, like, employment or, like, give me some health care or, like, mental health problems or a therapist? And they're like, no. But what we do have is this hat. And you're like, I guess, is it, like, exclusive? Is this, like, something that just I will have? And they're like, no. Fucking three kids from Iowa just bought seven at the National World War II Museum in New Orleans, New Orleans. And you're like, oh, this seems like a bad deal. And it's just like, yep, it was. I don't know. But I had a good time other than that. The World War II Museum was a tits. I had a really fun time there. Um, then we did some shows in Atlanta. Atlanta was great. Atlanta, the weather was the warmest it was. It was weird. We drove through, like I said, literal desert for a while and the entire time we were there it was like 65 degrees 70 degrees the whole time in los angeles tucson austin all of it that was what was funny about austin is like we would be in austin and we'd be like oh man this is great like i could like they got a bunch of clubs like it's a booming comedy scene like this is fun like we could all like we could kind of live here and then we were like oh yeah but it's fucking texas and it gets to be 115, 20 degrees on a regular basis. You're like, oh, yeah, they're kind of bait and switching us right now. It felt like, I mean, it was it was warmer in New York on two of the days than it was in Austin. Like, it, if it was that t climate the whole time, I, that would be the tits. I would consider maybe moving there. Um, But, yeah, don't be swindled by cooler Texas because it's, it's hot. It's hot down there. I don't know. 
Oh, last thing before I'll, I'll say before I go, I fucking I can't believe I didn't say this to begin with. I can't believe I I didn't tell this story, um, because I almost to go there from New York to L.A. I almost missed my flight, like could not have been closer. Missed the fucking flight. Um, like got to the the gate like kind of fucking like slid on like Indiana Jones style slid past the door as they were closing it like that's how like uh Graham and Elizabeth the two other comics I went with were like at the gate and as I arrived they were like oh they did final they called final boarding five minutes ago like I didn't get there like as they were saying it or like a couple seconds after like it was a solid it was a tight five minimum after final boarding that I arrived there because so we get there Sam drives me to the airport it's a fine time we have really no issues getting to the airport uh, get there like an hour and 15 minutes before before I'm like I'm okay I'm, I'm I'm feeling all right about this then I show up and I find Graham and he is freaking out because they have like I guess there's a cutoff because if you're checking a bag there's like a cutoff between like well before the flight takes off so that they can actually load all the bags onto the plane. So there's like a hard cutoff. And so he's freaking out on how to get his bag on board. He like, I show up to him and I was like, hey man, if you're, uh, is anyone gay here? Oh, you, like I was just being stupid. And he was just like, go find the, cl the, the closest line with the shortest amount of people. Go do it now, 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 now. I'm like, gee, okay, sorry. And then like, this is at like 5.30 in the morning as well. And so then I go... And I try to find something and nothing was there. And so he gets in line. He asks these two people to go ahead of them. He is able to get his bag onto the plane with quite literally 15 seconds to go. Like on a countdown, it could not have been closer to not getting his bag on the plane. And so he gets that. And so then we go inside and we're like, whew, okay, we made it. We're going to have, a, we're, it's going to be fine. They have TSA pre check. I do not because it's my right. And. It is my right as an American to wait in line at the airport. It's my right. It is my right to have a middle seat, and it is my right to wait an extra 50 minutes in security and potentially have a golden retriever sniff my asshole. That is my right. So they do that, right? They go through P TSA pre-check, and then I get in line, and, like, I've got, at this point, I've got, like, probably, like, an hour 15 or so to make it, an hour 10 to get through security. And so I'm like, okay, we're feeling all right. I'm doing okay. And then, like, I get in line, and then they, like, flash a thing up, and they're just like, the this process to get through the security is going to take about 55 minutes. I was like, eek. That's a little close. That's a little close for comfort, if I'm honest. And so I was like, okay, this is going to be, this is going to be tight. And then it was like a sitcom level of everything that could go wrong kind of went wrong or like I would just get a, so like I'm going and I'm like, I'm walking and like I'm walking through the line and then there's like one of the ladies where they're like trying to keep the flow a little bit different and she like opens it up. She's like, okay, I can take some people over here. I can take some people over here. And she like goes, goes, goes. And then like right, literally like one person before me, she's like, oops, sorry, we're done doing this. And I was like, okay, so where do I go? And she was like over there. And then you just see like the entire borough of Queens in line. And you're like, oh, perfect. Love that. And the only thing that really got me through that portion was that like there was a couple British dudes in front of us and he like he was turned he turned around to his to his friend and was like, oh, mate, I'm fucking fuming. I'm fuming. Like they just put us in a longer queue. Now we're just in a longer queue. Could have gone over there, gotten through the fucking security. But now we're just in a longer queue. Makes no fucking sense. I'm fuming, bruv. I'm fuming. He just kept saying I'm fuming. He, I'm fuming, bruv. I'm fuming. Call me an American muscle car. I'm fuming. I'm a fucking Dodge, a Dodge Challenger, fucking fuming, bruv. Like, he just kept saying fuming, and I was like, okay, this is the only thing that's going to make this bearable because you are hilarious to listen to when you're upset. And so he was fuming the whole time, and so then, like, it's just like we're crawling along, we're crawling along. Then I get in, like, this line, 
and like I wait in it for probably five minutes until the guy in front of me turns around. He's like, "Oh, sorry, this is uh, this is just a line for uh, for staff and pilots. Like, uh, you don't have to wait in this one." I was like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" And so like I I got out of that and I walked I walked past him and I got down and it's just such a shit show because they've got like seventeen different lines that are like all merging down into like two things trying to go at once. And so I get real close. I'm and like and now at this point I've got like. I'm close to the front of the line, but like they've they started boarding five minutes ago, so I think the flight left at like seven ten. It's like six forty five right now, so like we're getting we're getting we're getting down to the the nitty gritty. I get up to the front, and in front of me there is a Hasidic Jewish family that is I want to get the number right about twenty deep. They're rolling deep this family it's the dad the mom and then like the tri the entire tribe of judah is in front of me in line and they all of the kids are young except for how does how does every hasidic jewish family have like one kid that is like six years older than the rest of them because there's like one daughter and she's like kind of the ringleader because the parents are off doing whatever and She's just in front of me, and she's, like, trying to get everybody... St and nobody understands. It's like they've never fucking flown before. I don't know. Do I, do I keep my shoes on or no? And ba -da -ba 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 -ba, whatever. And you go through. And so then they, they, they have 17 bags. And I'm, just, I'm, I'm, I'm fuming, bruv. I'm standing there. I'm fucking fuming. Just put your bag through the X-ray machine. I'm fuming. And so they do that shit. And then... I finally, like, I finally get through all of that, and then I take my bag, and, like, I get, and I realize, like, I look at my, like, my phone, I was like, I do not have any time, so I don't even put my, my belt back on, I don't put my jacket back on, I just, like, throw it over my shoulder, I have my backpack, I grab my duffel, I throw it over my shoulder, and I am running, hauling ass through JFK Airport, I mean, it was, it was a show, and, of course, we are at like gate B thirty thousand at the end of the fucking the tarmac, whatever it's called. Like we're, we, I am at the end of the terminal. Terminal is what it's called. So I am going and I am hustling, dude. I mean, I am just moving it. And my mouth, I uh, this again. This is fucking six o'clock in the morning. I haven't. It's not like I've drank a bunch of fluids that day. I had half a cup of coffee. And so, like, my mouth, I can't, my mouth won't, it almost won't open. There's so little moisture in it. It's quite insane. Like, I mean, you want to talk, my mouth was Arizona. Um, and so I was, I was just running. And, like, you look and, like, you round the corner and you're, like, B5, B, I'm, like, oh, my God, I got to fucking run 30 more of these. And, like, I don't know if it was just the extra weight, if it was the pressure, if it was the bag, it was the mouth. But, like, I have never run harder in my life and like I would like be sprinting I would just and then I would look up and I'd only made it like two more gates I was like you got to be kidding me and I like I'm dod bobbing and weaving like I'm giving like a Heisman trophy level performance just fucking just get out of my way fucking underneath the fucking spin move x button b button all of that and I finally get there and I get to the gate we get on the plane and then they were like oh Turns out you're gay. Fuck! But yeah, I made it on the flight. They were super not expecting us to be on the flight because they came up and asked me, Graham, and Elizabeth. They were like, what's your name? Where are you from? It's like they were doing crowd work with us. They were like, "Where? what's your name? Where are you from? Where are you going? What are you doing? What's the deal? I'm like, I'm not... I, I, I'm on the plane and I have a... T Do you think I made it past like 17 rounds of security and a Jewish family just to fucking... Like, what, what are we doing here? This is insane. So yeah, that was a fun time. I made it. Um, we made it. We did it. And we had a good time. <sighs> All right. Well, that's it. I got kind of worked up there, but I need, I do need to go. I got to shave and then I'm meeting Sam for lunch and drinks and we're going to have a good time. So yeah, please rate, review, subscribe. Please uh, tell your friends. Tell your friends. Um, yeah, follow me on everywhere, Matt Bowman Comedy, except on Twitter, which is Batmoman, B-A-T-T-M-O-W-M-A-N. Uh, yeah, big things coming, big things happening, positive attitude, manifest, fuck yeah. 
Stay bothered, folks. See you next week. Bye-bye.